Brandon Parker with Didactics Online. Today we're going to be doing a lymphatic video. So we're going to go over the anatomy, some of the indications, contraindications, as well as some of the techniques in order to treat the lymphatics. So in general, not only for peripheral swelling, but you can use this to treat some systemic issues. Asthma is one example, and you should check out our asthma podcast for some more information on that. Contraindications. You don't want to be using this for any fever over 102, no lymphatic treatments. Any peripheral infection, no lymphatics to that area. And if you have any cancer, that's a relative contraindication, especially if it's a recently diagnosed cancer. So anytime you're doing a lymphatic treatment, you're aiming to move that lymphatic, get a better flow, free up the diaphragms, as well as move that lymph towards those thoracic ducts. You have the left and the right. Left one's a little bit more important. It's gonna be the entire body besides the right thoracic cage, right upper extremity, right side of the head and face, as well as in the smallest percent of the population, the left lower lobe will actually be drained by that right thoracic duct. So, in the osteopathic world, we acknowledge eight peripheral diaphragms. That's going to be explained over here on this model. We have the plantar fascia, the popliteal fascia, the pelvic diaphragm, the thoracoabdominal diaphragm. This is Simpson's fascia or the suprapleural fascia, followed by the OA musculature, the tentorium, and the selaterska diaphragm. So you want to make sure all those are freed up so you can get nice lymphatic flow. As well as the order can be very important. So you want to free up those thoracic ducts up here, then move on thoracic, followed by abdominal, followed by extremities, and then head and neck. And then you always want to finish up with one or two thoracic treatments to make sure that things are really moving well. So I'm going to show some techniques now. Tara will come over here. Go and lay down Tara. So first thing always, you want to open up those thoracic inlets. The superior thoracic aperture can be made up of T1, the first rib, manubrium, as well as Simpson's fascia. What you want to do is release that, because any restriction in that fascia will impede the flow of lymphatics. So you just use either indirect or direct. This is myofascial release. You can take a look at our myofascial release video for some more information on this technique. And you just want to make sure that's nice and released. You can also take a complete hold of the entire unit and try to release it that way. Once we have those opened up, we can start, we, the clog is gone, and we can start draining everything else. So first thing you want to do, you can take a grab of the pectoral muscles, and just pull. Get a nice release here, and that'll help open this area up some more. So I'll go over a few of the thoracic treatments. First thing will be a thoracic pump. You want to, there you go. Pay attention to any female anatomy and make sure that you have the patient's hands below yours and take up any soft tissue because you don't want to just be pushing back on soft tissue. You want to have a good grip of that thoracic cage, get a nice hold, and then you're pumping. You want to aim for a rate of about 100 per minute pumps. Another technique very similar to this, I'll ask the patient to go ahead and look to the right. Bring your hands up here, and this is the thoracic vacuum. So again, I take up the slack, push down, deep breath in, all the way out, and I take up that slack, then deep breath in, I don't allow that out. All the way out, take it up again, then deep breath in, and you let go about a third of the way through the inhalation. Sometimes you can feel like the patient's about to choke on their tongue, but it gets a really good vacuum and pulls that lymphatic flow, get things moving. Then moving on down to the abdominal area, which is going to be the next area. Of course, we want to open up that thoracoabdominal diaphragm. You can do that, bring up the legs, relaxes those muscles, aim just medial to that rib cage, and kind of move superior. Then you can use some breathing and some pushing in a cephalad manner in order to release that diaphragm. You can also do, similar to thoracic pump, we have an abdominal pump, which basically you're just moving medial, getting a nice grip below the xiphoid, and pumping in a superior fashion. This one's more of 20 to 30. You're not gonna to wanna to be going 100 pumps per minute down here in the abdomen. There's also a liver and spleen quiver. Because I'm on Tar's left side, we can do the spleen quiver. You just wanna have a hand on the posterior aspect, come below the rib cage, take a deep breath in, all the way out, and I'm coming down towards the spleen, posterior, the other deep breath in, all the way out. I won't be able to palpate the spleen, but once I'm in that area, you can just give a little bit of a quiver. Again, you can do the same thing on the right side, and that'd be the liver quiver. So then moving on to peripheral. Something you can do, another pump, so we have thoraco, abdominal, now let's check pedal pump. Of course, you wanna make sure that the popliteal fascia is released, so you're not just pumping into a closed dam. So you wanna make sure you completely dorsiflex, so you're not just down here. This is the equivalent of taking up that slack that we did in the thoraco pump. Take up that slack, and then just pump again. Again, we're aiming for about 100 per minute here, just like in the thoracic pump. So another thing you could do anywhere peripherally, you can do petrosize and effleurage. Petrosize is going to be essentially kneading, so just kneading that soft tissue and that lymphatics in the peripheral distal extremities, and then effleurage, which is just milking. Again, you're always aiming 
towards that thoracic inlet. So in this case, we're heading towards that arm and we've already freed up the thoracic area and we know that we have a pretty good flow going on in there. So now go ahead and sit up for Mitara. So let's say the patient has some congestion in the head or neck area and we want to work maybe around an ear, uh, earache or ear infection. Go ahead and take a look to the right. We can use our fingers just like this and get pre and post auricular. And we want to go in both clockwise and counterclockwise motions and make sure that we free up all that fluid. So now that we've freed that pre and post auricular area up, we want to bring that fluid down towards uh, down the mandible. So this is the mandibular raking, also known as Galbraith's technique, and it's just going to be just like it sounds. Mandibular raking, raking down the mandible. So now we've freed it up here, moved it down towards the chin, and now we'll come in front of the patient and we're going to do some mandibular work. So we're in here and we're just kind of pushing up towards the head as well as kneading back. So we've brought the fluid down, we're pushing it back. If I were to come back and forth, so now I'm heading back this way, you don't want to end here. You want to make sure that your last motion is heading back towards the duct. Remember, that's something I can't stress enough, we're always heading that way. So now I have the fluid here, and I want to just bend forward a little bit, flexing at the head, and I'm just moving the anterior trachea back and forth, milking that fluid down. If you think something's getting stuck up towards the hyoid, you can make sure you have a good grip of the hyoid, and again, just some lateral pull back and forth will free that up. Then moving down, making sure I'm finishing down. So we're always heading down towards the thoracic inlet, so down from the top, up from the bottom, in from the out. Make sure you're always aiming there. We didn't cover every technique and we didn't cover every contraindication or indication, but this is a good general overview. If you have any questions or comments, please join us on didacticsonline.com.